gaga. Shit. Okay, I'm not. Oh my gosh. I'm short. Do short people do this? I don't know what I got myself into. New destination. Just arrived in Makale, which is in northern Ethiopia near Tigray. This is actually the area that was going through all the conflict. They've been through a lot and now it's settled down and it's safe to travel to. So there's a place called Garata and they have these monasteries that are really high up in the rocks. Been wanting to do it for a while and so I'm finally having the opportunity. And we are traveling with World Sun Ethiopia Tours. This is Nagasi. This is our driver. Have to. With two other solo travelers, <laughs> Lakshmi yeah. and Khadija. They've been yeah. traveling backpacking all over Africa, right? Yeah. We <laughs> Still friends. <laughs> Still friends. <laughs> Still friends. Yeah, we've not murdered each other yet. So we are all going to be traveling together to Abuna Map. Abuna Yamata. Abuna Yamata Ga is a church high up in the sandstone mountains of Garata. It sits over 8,000 feet in the air, and the only way you can get there is to climb straight up and barefoot. After breakfast, the plan was to stop by the oldest mosque in Africa and then make our way to Hausen, the city right beside the Garalta Mountains. And then the next morning, wake up early and start our trek to the monastery. So we're gonna have a typical Tigrayan breakfast. And what is this called? Special kachapa. Special what? Kitcha. Kitcha is the bread. Kitcha. It's like mix and cook. Oh, that's full. That's full. Yeah. Oh, that's full. Which are beans. Fava beans, right? Yeah, yeah. Fava beans. So you should see what yeah, the butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And beans. Yeah, like some bucket. Made a pit stop on the way to buy some cola. Can I see? This is Ah, ish. They're like smoky, kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. popcorn yeah. seeds. We just bought cola and gugara. Gugara, gugara. Yeah. Gugara, huh? Gugara. Gugara. Yes. Gugara. Gugara. Yeah. Gugara. We are about to see the oldest mosque in Africa. They said it got a little bit destroyed from the Tigrayan War. Al Najashi Mosque was built back in 613 CE in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. According to some sources, it was one of the first, if not the oldest, mosque in Africa. Others dispute this claim of being the oldest, but I'll stick with what I was told. I'm gonna go check it out though. During the two-year Tigrayan War, which started in 2020, the mosque was damaged by Ethiopian and Eritrean forces, but luckily still stands and is currently being repaired. One of the many things I love about Ethiopia is the diverse cultures throughout the country. Each region has its own uniqueness and distinct traditions. It's good. It's good. It's like tender. From the food to the style of dressing, as well as the jewelry and hairstyles, a person can tell exactly which region someone is from. The women in the Tigrayan region have their hair braided like this, and then you can see the silver hoop earring that she has in her ear. This also has like a really, really cool baby carriage. It's beautiful. I love this. It's for the baby to play. When he cries, he just play with it. Oh.
After a few hours driving, we finally made it to Hausen, the city right before the Godalta Mountains. And as with many parts of Ethiopia, it was lush and green and just beautiful. We met a farmer who was plowing the land using oxen, and I wanted to try it out. But somehow, I honestly probably caused him more work and trouble than anything. You run away. I'm not a good farmer. <laughs> Behind me are the Garalto Mountains and tomorrow morning we're gonna be climbing somewhere up in there or somewhere back in here. It's gonna take us about an hour, they said, for us to hike straight up one of those, one of those mountains. And the views here right now are gorgeous, but it's storming. All of that is rain. You can hear the thunder. So this Geralta mountains are a chained mountains which covers about 48 kilometers and we have 30 rock churches in every peak of the mountain. I had this brainiac idea to try to hurry and fly my drone to the mountains before the storm came and before it got dark. Guys, I'm new at flying a drone. I practiced once in Lalibela and this was only my second time. Let's just say my prayers earlier at the mosque didn't include my drone. I lost my drone! And I think I hit a tree. This is what happens when you're new and you fly a drone. The guys ran off immediately to try to find it, but I flew it one and a half kilometers before it crashed. Unfortunately, I flew it really far away and it's getting night and it's getting like it's gonna rain. I don't know what I got myself into. So I lost the guys. I have no idea where they went. I yelled for Nagasi's name and nobody answered. So I pray, I pray, I pray that they find it the car. So we made it back to the car and um, we're, we're locked out. They're back. Did you find it? You got it! Yes! My hero! I got it! Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, they have it. It's even in one piece. Oh. Yes! in the morning we are on our way to Abuna Yamada uh, everyone is dressed in white it's a saint date Saint Gabriel that's where we're going we woke up extremely early to try to make the climb before it became too hot so we have an hour hike up the mountain there's a couple people that will be there to help us and supposedly we'll be putting our hands in holes and like going like straight up I asked if anyone's ever fall fallen before and they said no <laughs> so that's a little bit reassuring So this is a holy tree. Holy tree. Yeah. There is a priest who climbs to the top of the mountain every single morning to a church carved into the sandstone. It is said to be one of the most inaccessible places of worship on earth. It's also said to be a place that brings you closer to God. So this is the part we take off our shoes now and we climb the rest barefoot. We have about 15 minutes to go. This way here by using hand grips and footholders by a barefoot. By barefoot. 
For those of you who might be wondering, there is a guy who climbs up first, bringing a rope for you to be able to use. Somehow though, I completely missed that. I didn't get a ton of footage of the actual climb, but it's one of the scariest things that I've done in a very long time. The grooves in the rocks are all made by weather over time, and they're very smooth, so I never really felt like I had a secure grip, on top of having a hard time even what? reaching the holes. I'm short. Do short people do this? Sure. <laughs> oh my God. Once I made it, I felt extremely accomplished. I attempted to fly my drone again, despite the earlier crash. I was told that many people have crashed and lost their drones forever up here because of the wind and the tall rocks. At one point, birds even started circling my drone, so I didn't stay up here for too long. I was a little bit nervous. The name Abuna Yamataga is derived from an ancient language called Giz. Abuna means father. Yamata was one of the nine Syrian saints that came from the Eastern Byzantine Empire during the 6th century, and Ga is the name of the countryside surrounding the mountains. After climbing, you then have to walk on a ledge to get inside the cave church. All of this climbing and walking on the ledge is not for the faint of hearts, but trust me, if you have the opportunity to do it, do it. First of all, we would like to say you well done and welcome to Geralta. Geralta is normally the name of the whole chain of mountains here. And the word Geralta is a Giz word, which means a place with lots of up and down hills. So this church is believed that it has been built during the 6th century AD. And when you see the paintings, they are directly painted in the rock. And the color that they used to paint is from a natural colors. Collection of a green plant is a blood of animal, charcoal. We found out that the current priest is 35 years old and he's been coming up to this church every morning for the last eight years. So as I was telling you there, it has a meaning why they build the church in the top of the mountain. The first reason is the ancient people believe that the top of the mountain is closest to God. And the second reason is to protect from such enemies. And the third reason is they want to isolate themselves from the local people and get a very quiet area to pray. Here we have the paintings of the 12 apostles. So here are nine and three of them are here. Peter, Paul and Thomas are here. Those are the 12 apostles. The paintings here we also have such a very old book. A book which is dated back to the 14th century AD. So this is a book which deals about a miracle of Virgin Mary. And it's a book which is made up of a goat skin. Do you touch it up ever? Uh, no. Never been touched up? No, never restored. Those are the original paintings. Okay. It's well preserved, directly painted in the rock. The priest who has the key of this church comes every morning to open the church, make the incense and read a book. Right outside the church, there is another cave where they baptize people. So we just have like a, a jar of water, which is blessed, that's how we bless it. That's how you baptize people. Uh, we don't put them in the water in a lake. Then we made our way back down the same way we went up. Yes, Zan, how was it? Ooh, I did it. It was a little, it was a little scary, a little crazy, but it was amazing up there. Well done. Thank you. Ciao. After our successful climb, we headed back to the airport and stopped at a market along the way. Today is market day in Hausen, which is Wednesday. So everybody comes to trade and buy their goods for the week. Two hundred for a chicken? Yeah. This man is selling chickens. It's they're about two hundred burr for one chicken, which equals about four dollars.
So you ask like how much for the can, you know, the agro price, and she counting. So here in the market, they do their measuring by a can. So you're basically paying per can for the grain. So like this woman, she's selling Hamza, which is 50 bur for one can of grain. <laughs> Many of the locals wear these rubber shoes that in some ways they look like like jelly shoes back in the day or now kind of even crocs they're really good because they're waterproof but yet they're sturdy so you see people walking through even the mountains in these shoes i was told that this man here wears his scarf in this particular way that symbolizes he fought in the tigrian war we just stopped along the road which is a place, I guess, that is famous for selling the cactus fruit. She's multitasking. She's talking on the phone. She's peeling some cactus. And she's got a baby behind her. <laughs> Strong woman. I'm on my way back to Addis now. I swear, Ethiopia never fails to amaze. I mean... Goralta was awesome. Abune Yamate was just so cool. It was another like challenging thing, but it was amazing. It's such a beautiful country. So many different cultures. I just, I just love this place so much. Please like and subscribe to support my work and see more adventures and cultures around the world.